Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, the old CJ5 is getting a new old stock power lock limited slip for the front axle. Let's take a look at this thing real quick before I get it installed. So it's still in like the original wax paper it would have come in. I think I bought this off of eBay a while back and I bought it because it was really cheap. It was cheaper than a lock right. Now, this right here actually ends up replacing your whole carrier. So I'll swap the ring gear over, press off the bearings, take the shims out, and press all that back on here. And the way this works, it actually come with the original installation manual. It's really cool because this is a Dana Spicer part. This is new old stock, like I said. And here's an exploded view of kind of what we're looking at here. So it looks like they made these for the 27, the 53, and the 44. I've never heard of a 53. But you got like these Belleville spring plate deals in here. And then between those, you've got some little clutch discs. And an open differential, when I spin this tire, the other tire over here is gonna rotate the opposite direction because it's got that open differential that whichever tire has the least amount of traction gets all the power. The whole idea about that though is when you're making a turn, you know, one tire is turning a little bit slower than the other and it helps you turn a little sharper and everything. Now the rear axle, if you saw that video, I'll throw the thumbnail up here. That means both tires turn at the same time pretty much all the time now. With this limited slip, up to a certain point, both wheels will be getting all the power, but it will end up slipping because we've got these clutch plates and those Belleville spring plates. A lock route like I put in the back is probably going to be a little bit better than what this is right here. This will be great for trails and some mud for rock crawling though. This is probably not the ideal product. But like I said, it is quite a bit cheaper than buying a lock right. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and jack this thing up, get it on jack stands, wheels and tires come off, and start tearing into this axle. I went ahead and just time lapsed through the brakes. I've got several videos on the disc brake setup on this thing. Go over to my channel and check it out if you want to learn more about it. This is kind of the point you'll start out on any Jeep though. I've got logging hubs. If you don't have these, you'll still have a drive flange and you'll still have these six bolts. I'll take these six bolts out. This cap will slide off. And then up inside here, there's a little snap ring. That snap ring out of the way, this whole thing just slides off. Now you've got your hub or your dry flange off, either one. You're gonna have a nut, washer, nut, washer. So there's a little piece on this first washer folded over to keep this nut from turning. Take a little screwdriver or a chisel or something, and you're gonna knock that flat back. And then take the appropriate socket. I'll have this link down in the description. Go ahead and knock that thing loose. There's the first nut. There's that first washer and you can see in different spots where it's been bended over. There's that second nut. And there's that second washer. Now the whole hub will slide off. There's your outside wheel bearing and then captured by your hub seal is the inner bearing. Now mine looks a little different because of the disc brakes, but yours will be exactly the same. It'll be these six bolts here 
on the backing plate of your drum brakes, you're gonna have to take all them loose. Now give this spindle a couple taps, it should come right off. Now it's as easy as just pulling this axle shaft out. And that's as far as this side's gotta go. I think it's safe to say these front axles come apart way easier than the rear axles do. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did on this side over here real quick, and then I'm gonna crack into that diff cover. I went ahead and took all the bolts out of this cover here. And I noticed while I was doing it, there's some silicone. It's kind of hard to see, but in different spots right here, there's a big glob of it. So somebody at some point has been in this front axle. It don't look like that rear axle's ever been fooled with. Here's the tag, and you can see the 427 a lot easier on this one. So let me grab a hammer and a screwdriver, and I'll knock that cover off. It looks like this axle might have been a little low on oil or pretty low, but the oil looks a lot fresher than the rear end. So I do think this has been fooled with at some point. Might be a little bit more trash up in this front end too. Looks like some gunk is built up right here over time. It was pretty low on oil too, it looks like. Probably that pinion seal. It looks like the rear one, that pinion seal is leaking pretty bad. I'm gonna have to get up there and change both of them probably. We'll get in there and knock them bearing cap bolts off. But before that, I've gotta make sure I go and mark them. Do the same thing I did in the rear, do a dot there, a dot on the housing, two dots there, and then two dots on the housing. Boy, this thing just come jumping out of there. That rear one, I really had to work on it to get it to come out, it was pretty tight. But as soon as I put that pry bar on here, this thing just jumped right out of there before I could even grab a hold of it. Here's side by side though, here's your stock carrier. Here's that limited slip I'm gonna be installing. There's two things I gotta do here. I gotta press these bearings off, keep up with which side gets what shims. There should be some shims right up in there. And then I've also gotta take this ring gear off and swap it over. Man, it's almost a little concerning how loose everything is on this front end. Took that ring gear, spread it down real good with some brake clean. Really cleaned out these holes right here. You want no oil or grease in them holes. Set this on here for now. And then this carrier, I'm gonna have to take it somewhere else where there's shock press and press these two bearings off. Like I said, keep up with which side gets what shims but should be as easy as just getting up under here and putting my plate on there and pressing these off. They do make an actual puller for these bearings. Uh, the one on Amazon was like 120 bucks, but I so rarely need to do this. I just couldn't justify buying the tool. Probably ain't gonna ruin these bearings, but it don't look like these bearings were that great anyways. And I've got new ones to replace them. I've got all this stuff swapped over to the power lock now, and I wish I could have showed y'all a little bit more, but where the press was at, there's not very good light, so you can't really see what I'm doing. And the ring gear, I ended up putting the ring gear over here in this little toaster oven for a minute. I did like maybe four minutes on 450. It was just enough to get it warm, like it's just warm to the touch. It wasn't like super hot. 
and it just slid right on there. Otherwise, it was kind of tight. I'm gonna recommend go ahead and get the correct puller for these bearings. Like I said, it's 120 bucks. I don't know if you'll ever use it again, but trying to press them off on the shock press was really hard. I actually ended up having to cut this one off. This one, I rigged up a thing. I'll show you all a picture of it. It's super sketchy. It's just not the right way to do it. Anyways, I put the ring gear on, cleaned all this hardware up too, got all the old oil off of it. A little bit of red Loctite. And then the book right here, it says Dana 27 ring gear screw. And it says 35 to 55 foot pounds. I ended up putting them all at 40. I think that's plenty. And then it's got right here for the bearing caps. If you remember on the rear end, it's like 70 to 90, which is what it says here. But the 27 looks like the only one they recommend 50 to 70. So a little bit lighter on that one. Now, before I put that in here, I want to get this thing super clean. You can see like all that gunk and buildup right there where the bearing caps were at. This front axle looks a lot worse shape than what the rear was in. And maybe it's just because it wasn't properly maintenance. I need to go around and clean up this whole gasket surface, get that super clean, and then I can go ahead and throw that limited slip in. Cleaning off that old gasket is gonna make a lot of trash in here. So you need to clean that up and then spray the inside out with brake clean. Get as much old grease and junk and everything as you get out of there. So I'm pretty happy with this, it's pretty clean. So I think I'm ready to go ahead and stick this carrier back in. I got everything torqued down. I think the book said the caps was like 55 to 70 or something. So I got about 60 or 65 on these cap bolts here. One thing I'm gonna check is the backlash between the ring gear and the pinion. So if you watch my dial indicator here, so it looks like about 12, 13 thousandths of backlash. I think the tolerance is four to 10 or six to 10, something like that. That's got that whole install wrapped up as far as that goes. I do have to replace some stuff on these knuckles. I'm gonna put new wiper seals on and I think I need to fool with the preload on these king pins a little bit. They seem a little too tight. I've got some shim packs to adjust those a little bit. And then I'll be ready to throw this axle back together. All right, I got everything fixed up on this knuckle. I added a few shims up here. So come to find out in like 63, they quit putting shims on the bottom. They only put them on top. And it seems like this was missing shims for some reason. But I got that all fixed up. I also changed out my wiper seal that goes on the back here. It's real simple. There's just eight bolts that hold this on. You can see it was about time this thing was completely shot. It wasn't doing its job anymore. Something to think about if you're gonna do something like this or even if you're doing the disc brake thing, maybe get you some new wiper seals for your knuckles. Inside the knuckle, I'm trying something new. This is CV grease or CV boot grease. It's from Napa, there's the part number. You should be able to just go in there and order this, but I saw on a forum somebody was saying this was good stuff. So I put a box already in there and then once I put it all back together, I'll probably squirt some more in through this fill port right here.
once I get the other side put on or put the wheels and tires on one of the two, I can go ahead and finish tightening these up. They're pretty close. I just want to make sure they're good and snug. Be careful never to over tighten these on these locking hubs because you'll end up breaking the caps or something. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side, get it slammed together. Maybe put a little bit more grease in these knuckles and put my brakes back on. I'll think I'll be about done with this. I've got this whole thing pretty much buttoned back up now. I've not put the diff cover back on yet. We'll get to that right here in just a minute. But this right here is what all this trouble is for. When I turn one wheel, they both turn. They're both locked up together now. I've got the diff cover cleaned up over here. I've got some more of this, the right stuff. I'm gonna dress it all with. Same thing I did in the rear end. Took some brake clean. And the wire wheel really got this thing nice and clean. And then once I have this cover on, I'll fill it back up with some gear oil. Lucas AW90, just like I did in the rear end. And this thing ought to be good to go. Well, y'all, I think that's about as far as I'm going to go on this today. I'm not going to put oil in it just yet because I am that two or three thousandths over on that spec on the backlash of the ring gear and the pinion. And honestly, it doesn't matter that much to me. It's the front axle. If it was the rear axle, I'd really be concerned. I'd, you know, I'd have to fix it and get it within that six to ten range or whatever. It's not ideal, and I'm probably going to have to go back and fix it. And this is a great opportunity for y'all to learn from my mistakes. So the whole reason I went with this power lock instead of a lock right was to save some money. I'm always trying to do stuff on a budget, always trying to save some money. But this has kind of backfired on me because I had the dumb idea that I would swap everything over, throw it in there, and it would be exactly like it was before. But obviously it don't work that way. So the shims that I took off and pressed onto this limited slip, what I need to do is take like a shim off the driver's side, swap to the passenger side, and that'll push that ring gear closer to the pinion and eliminate some more of that backlash. That's how you should properly set up these. But in order to do that without messing up the bearings, I've got to buy one of those tools. Now the whole idea behind this thing was to save some money, but if I buy a $120 or $200 tool to take them bearings off properly so I can swap the shims and not ruin anything, the whole budget just kind of flies out the window. My recommendation, unless you get a power lock for free or you got a buddy with the correct tools, maybe just go ahead, go with a lock right. The install is so much easier. You ain't got to set your gears back up. I am excited about it though. I'm excited to see how it works. It's probably gonna be great. I'm just kind of licking my wounds right now because my plan kind of fell apart. But you know, that's part of it. You live and learn, you try new things. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it don't. Really appreciate y'all checking out this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see y'all next time.